Hey everybody, let's talk about the step response for a series RLC circuit. So if you have right RLC, and then let's say, uh, let me draw it maybe like this. Okay, so let's say you have a switch over here. And then it's um, like this for a long time. And then we suddenly switch it over here at t equal to zero. That would be the step response, right? And then vice versa, if it were connected to the voltage source for a long time, and then we suddenly switch it over here to get rid of it, that would be the natural response. Okay, so let's backtrack a little bit just for review. Um, the world's fastest explanation of the natural response. So it's like this. So no voltage source. What does that look like? Let's just do KVL around this loop. So the voltage across the resistor. So natural response. Voltage across the resistor. IR, voltage across the inductor, L, DI, DT, voltage across the capacitor, V naught plus one over C, integral I, DT. Okay, now let's take a time derivative of this entire equation. So this will be I dot, this is I double dot. Time derivative of a constant is zero. And then the time derivative of an integral, derivative of integral, those are just, those are inverses, so just i. Okay, and let's see. Let's just divide everything by L. And then I'll move this to the front. And then this is next in decreasing order. And then this one. And I'll just do a substitution here. Let me factor a two over here. And then let's call R over two L, knee per frequency alpha. Let's call one over LC, omega naught squared. So then we have this. There. Um, for alpha being R over two L and omega being one over LC, well, square root of one over LC. Okay, so then that's the natural response. It's a homogeneous second order ODE in terms of current. Okay, now for the step response, we switch this over here. So now this independent voltage source is in the mix. I'll just call it something V. So let's go KVL around. So minus V plus the voltage across the resistor. IR, voltage across the capacitor, L, DI, DT, the voltage, oh, sorry, the voltage across the inductor was this. Now the voltage across the capacitor, I'll just call it the voltage across the capacitor for now. Okay, about the capacitor. We know that the current is C, DV, DT. This is for the we're talking about the capacitor, right? So the voltage across the capacitor. And look, this can go right there, right? This can substitute right there. Let's take a time derivative of this. Di dt is C. And then now the second derivative of the voltage across the capacitor. And this can go right there. So let me make those substitutions. Okay, so R and then C, DV, DT, plus L and then C and then second derivative, and then just this one. Okay. Now let me just divide everything by L, C, and then write it in decreasing order. So I'll write this one first. So that's V double dot, and then what's next? This one, so R over L, V dot, and then 
this one over here, V, and this is a constant, which I'll move on this side. Okay, and then let's do a sub, let me factor two out of here, and I'll call R over two L, alpha. I'll call one over LC, omega naught squared. So then we have this, V double dot plus two alpha V dot plus omega naught squared V equals omega naught squared, this one. Okay, now what does that look like? It looks like a non-homogeneous second order ODE in terms of voltage. And you know how to solve this, right? It looks analogous to parallel RLC. Okay, now how do we deal with the non-homogeneous equation? We do this trick where we just factor this out. All right, so let's move this on this side of the equation. So minus omega naught squared V, and then see how we can just factor. So I'm just gonna factor like this. There, and then let's do a U substitution. Let's call this U. VC minus V. This V is a constant, right? It's, it's this, this independent source, this one. Right, so if you take a time derivative, you dot, this would be VC dot, but then that's a constant. So the time derivative of that constant is zero. You double dot, v, VC double dot, right? And then we do these substitutions here, and then what do we get? We get this. We end up with a homogeneous second order ODE, which you know how to solve, right? The only difference is when you're done, so for example, just as an example, let's say it's overdamped, then your answer U of T would look something like this, where S1 and S2 are the, look like this. the roots of the characteristic equation. Okay, but then this is still our U sub. We need to put it back, right? So then, so VC is U plus V. So then if we change this back to V, we just have this extra term plus V, that's it. Right, that extra term, that extra constant added to the end of it. Okay, and then you know that you have to solve for these two coefficients using the initial conditions, right? Just set V at T equal to zero. And then what do you use next? Multiple choice. So do you use this or this? Because now we need dV dt at t equal to zero. All right, so then, let me write nicer. At t equal to zero, All right? So we need this, we, not this one. So for the capacitor, we need i at t equal to zero is c dv dt. So we need two bits of information. We need the current at t equal to zero, this, and we need the voltage at t equal to zero because, let me move the C over here. There, right? This is equal to this, which is this. So we have this equation. I mean, just keep going, right? We have this equation and then take a derivative of this, set t equal to zero, then you have a second equation. This number right here is exactly this, which means you need the current at time equal to zero and you need the voltage at time equal to zero. Okay, 
So, well, and then real quick, what does it look like? So, for time t, if you have that that value v over here, the underdamped response will look something like this. The overdamped response will look like say like this, and critically damped is maybe like this. Okay. And then this is analysis, so you kind of keep practicing till you get good at analyzing circuits like this until it's like second nature because your purpose as an engineer will be to design circuits. For example, it's more like your client says, I need voltage to be within this range over here within this amount of time. So I want to be in this range over here within this time limit. So then you're like, okay, so then you design, for example, some series RLC or parallel RLC, just depends on the application. And then you say, okay, if I go over damped, let's say the response looks like this. Okay, so now I'm within this range right around here, but that took too long. Okay, so then, really, okay, how about if I do an underdamped response that maybe looks like this? So then, okay, I'm within the range around over here that took too long, but maybe you change the values so maybe it looks something like, like say like this, like okay, look, I'm within that range here, within the specified time, so that's good. And then let's say we change our overdamped to be something more like this. Okay, so the overdamp is here. So which is better? My overdamped actually took longer to settle. The underdamped one was quicker over here. The trade-off though is the underdamped one has this overshoot. See how it went past my target and then settled back quicker. So then now th these are engineering decisions. Is it okay to have overshoot if we could settle within that target quicker? Or is it better not to have overshoot, but then it just took a little bit longer. So these are kind of engineering decisions. Okay. All right. So keep on practicing. Let me know if you have questions. I'll see you in the next video.